four children, all orphans, are recruited through a series of mysterious tests to go on a secret mission to save the world. How about that for a storyline? Well, that, in fact, is the storyline today on On the Same Page. Our book is called The Mysterious Benedict Society. It was written by Arkansas native and Arkansas resident Trenton Lee Stewart. And in its young adult category, this book has received wide acclaim. It is, in fact, a bestseller. So today, during the next half hour, we'll have a conversation with Trenton Lee Stewart, the author of The Mysterious Benedict Society, and also have our usual conversation with Arkansas readers, including some young people who really, really like this book. Why don't you watch and see if you're going to like it today on the same page. Great to have Trenton Lee Stewart in the AETN studios with us to talk about the book, The Mysterious Benedict Society, and we'll uh, we'll hit the Arkansas connection first. All the viewers are all interested in that. Born, raised, graduated high school in Hot Springs, right? That's right. Yeah, and lived for a while out of state, right? That's true. Yeah, Cincinnati area, mm -hmm. for Iowa for some years, and then Cincinnati. And a product of the Iowa Writers Workshop. We've had a couple of authors on here that are the product of that. Tell us what, what's so special about that place. How that aid your development. Uh, you know, I think uh, for one th for one thing, it has a long history of bringing um, writers in uh, to to work with each other and encourage each other, and um, and I think that that's probably the way that it benefited me most was to to meet a lot of other writers. It's a very literary town, and you become friends with people who then become readers for you in the in the years to come. Uh, so that that's probably the best thing about it. And how much time did you spend there? I was in the program for two years, which is the standard time, um, and then lived in Iowa City for a few years beyond that. How many years have you been writing full time? Full time, and um, meaning not doing I mean, no other work. jobs. Right, yeah, uh, uh, just uh, a couple, just a couple of years now. Yeah, first one in this category, and you called it. Would you call it a young person's book, children's literature? I, um, I, I've always thought of it as a, as it's a book for older children. Older children, um, but they say for young readers or middle grade readers. Seems to me, boys and girls alike would appreciate it equally. I right? hope so. Yeah, yes. you would think so. So, what what attracted you to this category? You know, I think for a long time I had wanted to write a book that was like the books that appealed to me when I was that age, because that was the age um, during which you could become most engrossed in books. You know, you didn't have to go off to work the next day a lot of times, and you could actually <laughs> afford to stay up later and, um, or read all day long on some occasions on weekends and whatnot. And I thought it would be great to try to write a book like that, that had absorbed me so much. Um, but I didn't know that I would do it as when I did. I thought I would wait until my own children were old enough to read it. Um, but then um, ideas started coming together, and I got started early. What were those books that that, that interested you? That, that kind of took you away when you were right. that age? Oh, the Chronicles of Narnia, for certain. Really? Um, I remember where they were on the school library shelf, and I uh, I didn't know much about libraries, so I w I wouldn't think to ask the librarian to hold books for me. <laughs> so I would just go in and hope that there would be something there. So the Chronicles of Narnia, Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. Mm -hmm. um, I read The Hobbit a few times. Sort of a, a world that you can escape into, right? A world of invention and, and fantasy and so forth like that. Yes, and and a lot of lot of adventure. A lot of adventure. And, yeah. A lot of twists and turns and puzzles and so forth. All of which are contained in this book right here. Where did the idea for this story come from? Um, you know, the, the the germ of the story came uh, from I mean, an image that popped into my head one day of a, a young boy or maybe an older boy taking a test that was more than it seemed to be, uh, and I wasn't sure what it would be. Or, or why it mattered, but I had the feeling that there was something going on that he was unaware of when he was taking the test. Um, so I just jotted that down thinking I would write it as that book that I was going to write someday, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but then I had a few other ideas over the course of a year or two that all seemed to have to do with some kind of challenge that a, that a child was undergoing. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I had enough of those, I, I, it occurred to me that I might ought to string them together and see what they added up to. So you, you're at, your first idea was actually where the book starts. The, yes, the, that's the, right. The main character of showing up for a test answering an ad in the new newspaper and the fact that he is an orphan mm -hmm. and the other four main char other three main characters in the plot are at least de facto orphans mm -hmm. uh, and of course the orphan we've seen in literature especially in this category for two or three hundred years or more 
How did you set about making this one a little different? So, and why, why are orphans good subject matter for books like this? If you're going to write this kind of book, you know, an adventure with children, um, then you have certain constraints. And it depends. I mean, if, if I was going to write a fantasy book where a child falls through a portal and he's in some other dimension, well, then you don't have to worry about the parents. They're immediately dispensed with. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's um, but as it happens, with, yeah, with this book, though, um, and certainly you're, you're right, there's a long tradition in children's literature, children's uh, adventure books of, of having kids who be orphans or something like orphans, runaways or whatever. And uh, I think that the author of children's books always faced with the challenge of what do we do with the parents? Yeah. And because we want this to be about the children, and they're the ones making the difficult choices, and they're the ones in danger and getting themselves out of trouble. Um, in this case, I was trying to write a book that was not a fantasy, but that was something like reality uh -huh. um, as we know it, but with just a little bit of tweaks here and there. I stretch it a bit, but I mean for it to be a, some, a, a world that seems somewhat familiar to us as a real world. Um, and I came up with the same problem, um, I think, that Mr. Benedict did in the book, who is the person who recruits these children mm -hmm. for, this, for an adventure, um, and that is that, um, that the par you know, a, a parent who's, who's involved in their children's lives are not going to let their children go. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and so you, start, so, you know, that I think got the, um, the, the, the gears turning, and I started thinking about not only how to get Rennie and the other characters alone uh, for this adventure, but also why, how, and other, what other ways it might matter. So ultimately it does matter in the, in the development of the plot, too, um, that they don't have parents. Those four main characters, to me, that seem to be the strongest part of the book. And I, I'd like to sound out their names, and you can sure. give me maybe Sort of like the Fantastic Four, you can tell me what their what their right. superpower is and what their vulnerabil vulnerability is. Rennie, the main character. Right, Rennie, Rennie Muldoon, short for Renard Muldoon. Uh, and his name is spelled such that a lot of people would pronounce it Rainy. It looks like mm -hmm. Rainy or Raynard. Um, but I pronounce it Rennie because I had a friend named Renard. Oh, okay. Um, so Rennie, yes, uh, he, uh, he's, he's sort of wise beyond his years. He's a very clever 11-year-old. Uh, um, so he's good at solving puzzles and he's really intuitive about other people's feelings and motivations and whatnot. So he's a bright kid and an intuitive one. Um, then there's Kate Weatherall, who has uh, a, an ebullient personality, um, and she's uh, enormously physically gifted. So she's acrobatic, and she's also excellent with tools. She carries a bucket with her at all times that's full of what, things that she considers useful. Super self-confident. That's right, very confident. Yeah. She has no doubts. Sticky about Washington. Sticky Washington. Sticky's his nickname. Um, and he's called Sticky by, or he's come to be called Sticky because everything he reads sticks in his head. He's a speed reader and he has a photographic memory. And uh, Kate, uh, Kate, we talk about Constance. I mean, yeah, Constance, Constance Contrer. Yeah. yeah. Um, none of the children know why she is special at the start of the book. All we, all they know for sure is that uh, she's very cranky and um, an unusually small. Um, but uh, the reasons that she's there um, become clear as the as the narrative develops. Okay. And these kids are chosen uh, through the process of solving puzzles, taking tests to actually save the world. So there's plenty at stake there and a lot of evil, a lot of menace, uh, uh, you know, facing them around every turn. How do you keep that world from being, I, I guess there's a pitfall and you can make it too dark right. for readers of that age. So is, is it kind of like walking a tightrope right there? I think it is, um, and, and there's also, I think ultimately there's a little tension, uh, I don't mean in a bad way, but between um, me and the editors, you know, so I, I might make a decision that I think is not too dark, and they might suggest, well, that, can you pull that back, maybe that, that is too dark, and then we would discuss it, and, and, we, and, and in many cases, uh, it, it turned out that I would develop something that I thought was more interesting by having some of that feedback and trying not to be too dark, but be interesting and original at the same time. Um, but I also would consult some of those old books that I read at that age to see, um, you know, how did that feel? What was the tone like? And, and is it too scary? Is it, are, are there books out there that, that you feel are, are a little bit too dark that sort of uh, take away from the experience by, by taking kids into a place that's got too much fear in it? I, I think that's a, that's a tough call because um, you can't, you can't know what age group will be reading your book. Right. Yeah. So I wrote this book f for what I imagine to be 11-year-olds uh, that were sort of like me when I was 11. Okay. But if a 7-year-old reads it, and I've heard that 7-year-olds have read it, um, then uh, there's not much that I can do about that. So, you know, that's a difficult thing because I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily advise a 6-year-old to read the book. Perhaps it would be too scary. Um, but some precocious readers might be able to tackle it. So I'm not sure what to say. There are books out there that seem too dark for the age group that's reading them. but. Um, I don't know what you could say about that right. or what's to be done, um, except hope that the kil kids can handle it. I scared my own son when he was five. <laughs> he, he was asking me to read, read p portions of it to him, and at some point he got too scared. Oh my and gosh. then, yeah, that was a dubious distinction. There you go. <laughs> you must be a puzzle lover.
I've always been intrigued by puzzles, and riddles really, actually, in particular, mm. um, though not a pr particularly good at puzzles in themselves. Um, yeah. But um, in The Hobbit, I remember as a kid, there's a whole, there's a scene in which Bil Bilbo Baggins is, is in the dark with Gollum, and, and it's called Riddles in the Dark is the chapter, and I was totally engrossed and um, absorbed by that, by that notion of, of needing to solve riddles and your life hung in the balance. And, uh, so I, I've al yeah, I've always had um, a, a, an interest in them. Definitely one of the big appeals of the book, the puzzles, the rid riddles, the problems to be solved there. But you don't have to be a puzzle, a puzzle fiend no. to enjoy the book by any means, right? Yeah, I hope not. <laughs> uh, great twists and turns in the plot, super cliffhanger stuff. Are you pleased with the way that all turned out? Did you like where it got to at the end of the story? I am ultimately, yeah, I'm pleased with, um, I'm pleased with how many twists and turns end up be uh, being in the book. I was, I was trying to write that book that, again, that would have amused me or engaged yeah. me when I was 11, <clears throat> and I always loved those sudden reversals and plot twists. Same, same uh, way you approach the dialogue in the book, the kind of stuff that amuses you. Mm -hmm. I that that's yeah. kind of seems to me would be a hard part, try, trying to find the right tone of voice for these characters. You don't want it to be like everyday language, but you, you, you don't want it to be overarch or anything. No, like you're that. right. That's, yeah. that's, that's quite the challenge. I mean, it helps that these kids were gifted kids, and so they can speak in a way that the average kid might not. Um, but, but on the other hand, the average young reader, um, you, you hope that the average young reader recognizes something in that language that seems familiar to them, that is sort of the way that they might talk. The attitude comes through and yeah. the perspective might come through, even if the way they talk is a little bit different. But certainly it's true, too, that um, as a writer, you want to keep yourself en engrossed in it and amused sometimes. Um, and so I, I think some of the times the kids say things that were funny to me, and I, I wasn't sure if they'd be funny to anybody else. You have children. You mentioned one of them. I do. That's right. Big source of uh, information, <laughs> a big source for the book, right? I think being, um, my oldest son was only two when I was writing the book, oh, yeah. um, but that was actually, I mean, it did actually inform the book in some ways. Yeah. Um, um, but being around kids and observing kids mostly um, was, um, I think, you know, that, that's the instruction that I took into the book. But also, I was one, so. Yeah, <laughs> that's a big one, too. That's a big source as well. A lot of acclaim for the book. You've got to be very, very satisfied about the, about the reception the book is. Yeah, I feel really lucky, yeah. actually. Yeah. Some people go as far as to say it's the next Harry Potter series. What do you think of that? Uh, I think it's a it's a generous comparison and an, you know and an unlikely one. Um, it's I think it'd be difficult for anything to be the next Harry Potter um, because it's it exists in a different dimension sort of. But um, but it's certainly it's it's a compliment. Seems to poss seems to be possible to me. And you're working on the sequel as we speak. Correct? That's right. Yeah, I finished a draft. I'm revising revising the book this summer. Same characters. Same characters. New adventure. New adventure. That's right. right. Looking forward to that. Would you Thank read you. just a little bit from the book? Some sort of expert excerpt for us here. Sure. Uh, I will read again the mysterious Benedict Society, and this is our author Trenton Lee Stewart. Uh, I'll read a passage from uh, just a paragraph from uh, that's from a scene that has Rennie, the main, one of the main characters, taking taking the tests okay. that he's been recruited to take. After a few more pages of questions, all of which Rennie felt confident he had answered correctly, he arrived at the test's final question: Are you brave? Just reading the words quickened Rennie's heart. Was he brave? Bravery had never been required of him, so how could he tell? Miss Paramal would say he was. She would point out how cheerful he tried to be, despite feeling lonely, how patiently he withstood the teasing of the other children, and how he was always eager for a challenge. But these things only showed that he was good-natured, polite, and very often bored. Did they really show that he was brave? He didn't think so. Finally, he gave up trying to decide and simply wrote, I hope so. Trenton Lee Stewart is the author of Mysterious Benedict Society, our book for this week on On the Same Page. We're going to take a quick break, and we come back with some Arkansas readers to discuss what they liked about the book. Trenton, thank you so much. Thanks for your time, and congratulations on a great, successful book. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. All right, we're back and ready to talk to our readers again. The book, The Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart, Arkansas author. And now our readers, thanks for joining us here today. First, Amy Lee Stewart, who is an attorney in Little Rock, has two daughters, one who has read the book, one who has not. And you have read the book, right, Amy? I have five daughters, one who has read the book. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, the two daughters in the, in the book has, story, though. That's right. <laughs> okay, five right. in all. And I have read it, yes. And you have read Loved it. it. Loved Georgette it. Sims is our other Arkansas reader guest today. A storyteller, mm -hmm. and if you browse for books at Wordsworth Books in Little Rock, you might know Georgette. Yes. She works there as well. Yes. That's and how I, I know Georgette. You know Georgette from <laughs> Wordsworth. I'm going to ask my first question to you, Georgette. Okay. I, I, let's 
what category does this fall in? It's, is it a children's book? A young, what's the nomenclature? What do we call it? Well, we call it a young adult book because it's an, for older, like, teens, like mm -hmm. tween, which tweens. is a new term. Okay. Tweens, right. <laughs> tween okay. kind right. of and going up into teen, whereas it's not a younger book. You know, mm. for has it been popular? Kids. Has it been a popular Very seller? Very popular. Mm -hmm. been getting a lot it's of on our bestseller list right oh, really? now. really? Mm -hmm. The Wordsworth mm -hmm. bestseller mm -hmm. list. It's been getting yes. a lot of publicity and yes. so forth? Yes, Around the country, not just... Around the country, but yeah. also here it has, and a lot of people have been coming in wanting how, to get it. How come <laughs> you picked it up and read it? I was going through the catalogs to order children's books and young adult, and I was reading through and I saw this book and I saw, noticed the illustration first because I really thought it was a great illustration. Uh -huh. And then I read just an excerpt from it because they gave it a two page thing in the catalog which I thought was a good sign. Is that sign. unusual? Or? Yes, yeah. it isn't yeah. unless they want to push a book. And so I thought, well, well, look at this. And I looked at it and it sounded good and it just seemed like a good book to me and one that I would like. So I waited for it to come out. Yeah, <laughs> and when it did, I was excited. And, and you liked it? Oh, yes, yes, liked it very yes. much. Amy, how did you come across this book? It, well, it's funny that Georgette would say that. The drawing, the, um, mm -hmm. the Joan Aiken series in the paperback has the same sort of style in the drawings. Mm -hmm. uh, the Will, Wolves of Willoughby Chase and the Battersea book. Anyway, so I, and we love those. So I yeah. looked at this and thought, you know, that's probably a good sign. And, and then I just, wow. you know, flipped through it. Well, there's there's a plug for an illustrators right yeah. there. You can, you can affect really the is. sales of a book. Yeah, yeah. and I oh. don't normally <laughs> notice illustrations. It's just this particular style reminded me of another series mm -hmm. that the children had liked a lot. Mm -hmm. Carson Ellis is the name of the illustrator of the, the, the Mysterious Benedict Society, just for the record. Mm -hmm. here, in case it, it, it is a very good, well-illustrated book. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah. What kind of story would you say this is, Georgia? Oh, uh, it's a fantasy, I think, somewhat okay. of a fantasy, but um, it's also somewhat realistic. It's not totally, but it does have some realism in it, and also it has um, a mystery. Yeah. You know, a lot of mystery in it. It's almost like a cliffhanger. At yes. Some point. So, yes. Like, like an old uh, uh, serial yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the old movie theater. Because I so always like. wanted to keep on reading after each chapter, you know, and I wanted to find out what was going to happen. We've got some kind of common themes that have been in, in books in this category for mm -hmm. hundreds of years. You think of Tom Sawyer and mm -hmm. oh, just all the way back, the orphan who really is not constrained by having to be at home <laughs> can go out and get in all kinds of adventure. Yeah. We see that, that category in good books and bad books. <laughs> what makes this one, in your mind, Amy, a good book? Um, you know, not only did I think it was very well written, um, I thought it was really appropriate for children. There was... You didn't have mm -hmm. anything in there that, you know, parents don't consider wholesome, but it wasn't um, sickly. Yeah. At all. I mean, it, it wasn't was, too dark mm -hmm. a story. It or, wasn't. Yeah. It was, it was, that's right. There was nothing scary about it, but it was, um, it was still energizing. I mean, you, 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 you want to read it. You want to find out what's going on. It was, it was, it's an intellectual book for children, which makes it so much more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and I... Actually, I saw it almost as a, a sort of semi-science fiction invent adventure kind of mm -hmm. story. Oh, sure, mm -hmm. yeah. And the characters were very, um, I thought they were well-rounded. They, they, the, the four main characters uh, among the children were well-developed. They were the kind of people that you'd want to go be buddies with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they were all very different, and I thought it was marvelous the way they kind of... It, they, they mesh together, which was exactly, I thought, an important theme of the story. Um, so as, you know, I look at these as a parent more than anything else, yeah. trying to find books that are appropriate mm -hmm. for the children to read. And um, I thought this one fit the bill along the lines of m much more traditional classics. Uh -huh. yes. yeah. Everyone different among the four characters. Mm -hmm. Everyone had a mm -hmm. sort of different talent to bring to the yeah. table, and mm -hmm. together they're a lot stronger uh, than mm -hmm. they would have been yep. a, as separate people. We've mm -hmm. we've seen that before too. But it really seems to be very strong, very insistent mm -hmm. on that theme. Did you like that theme, Georgia? Yes, that was one of the main themes I liked about it. That they were also individualistic, mm -hmm. and that they had they felt like they had nothing to offer, but yet in the world they didn't. They felt, but then they brought all of these talents. They and all came had, together and they saved yeah, this. Saved the world. <laughs> <laughs> they saved the world. They saved the world, <laughs> which is, this. you know, that's, that's right. there's a lot of stake. Again, without being too dark and, and, yeah. and terrifying, yeah. terrifying a book. Mm -hmm. Who was your favorite character in the book? 
I like Rennie, Rennie, the main. I felt like he was kind of the main character, but I really liked him. I just liked his personality. Amy, at your house, who's the favorite yeah, character? Yeah, I, 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 I thought the same thing. I thought, he, you know, he's the older brother in, mm. in the mix. Although I sure did love that little Constance. She was kind of a hoot. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't She's actually, kind of a what? A, a hoot. I wouldn't, oh, okay. actually, yeah. I wouldn't actually want to have one just like her, but, no. but she was a nice touch in the story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she really yes. was. 500 pages long. Is that, kind of, is that kind of long for everyone at your house, or do you, you like them long? Like no, that? this was a 24-hour read. Yeah. But, but, mm -hmm. it, but in the same way that people talk about Harry Potter's, because the, mm -hmm. it's just so good that the children kind of make every excuse to just sit down and keep reading it. Before we mm -hmm. started taping, Georgia, you told me that the Harry Potter books sort of raised the bar as mm -hmm. far as the length of books go. They did. And so, mm -hmm. so now, is, is that the expectation of a, of a successful book in this category, that it be so long? I don't know if it's success, you know, if that mm -hmm. makes it successful, but it, mm -hmm. you know, people do seem to expect it a little bit more. It seems like after that, the kids want more of it. Uh -huh. They want them to be longer, yeah. which is it, interesting. Some of it is the, the age. By the time they're 10 or 11, you know, they see a hundred or hundred and fifty page book as mm -hmm. n not enough. Maybe you know, for yeah, younger kids. Yeah, they're, or they're yeah. done in yeah. a couple hours. It's like mm -hmm. you can't get you can't get a good read out yeah. of it. It's not a good summer project, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just need more, and I think part of it is a marker of the age and the quality of the ability to read. It's, you know, when you're seven or eight, one hundred and fifty pages feels like a real book, but mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think it does when you're a little bit older. Let's talk about the author's style, what you mm -hmm. liked and didn't mm -hmm. like about it. Uh, you know, kids don't necessarily want people in books, the dialogue to sound like everyday conversations. You, you want it to be a little bit different, a little bit more, ha have a little more punch to it and a little mm -hmm. more. Uh, we don't want it in anybody. I don't want it in my books either <laughs> now, that, now that I think about it. But, uh, it, you know, you don't want dialogue that's too overdrawn or too mm -hmm. arch, on the other hand, either. Do, do you think there's a good balance here in this book? Did you, did you like the interplay? Oh, I liked it. Style? I liked that they um, continually were working things out, having conflicts, talking about what was going on, and had to work together. And I think he did it with the dialogue between them, mm -hmm. where it just really worked yeah. for that book. Would yeah, you I thought agree it was with that, very, Yeah, I thought it was yeah. very natural. Mm -hmm. I think it was, it was one of the great strengths of the book was yeah. that it, um, he's a very polished writer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it felt real, you know, like you were in their conversation, you know, you felt like you were listening in. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. reading it. <laughs> yeah, I no, hate, there I, were no, it's like you weren't waiting for canned laughs. Yeah, right. No. It, did, it didn't yeah. seem like, no, like forced good. comedy exactly. or, or drollness or, or whatever like that. You know, when you look in a good book, oh, I, I hate to look for things like morals and or lessons to be learned or, mm -hmm. you know, cautionary this or that. Do, do, you, do you find any such in this in this book here? I do think they have some. Not the do cautionary you? as much as just um, more like a self lesson just to, you know, to see yourself, mm -hmm. you know, really see yourself as who you are. And that's so hard. And I think that a lot of young adult books focus on that because that's such a hard time. Is that an important thing for, for kids to get out of literature? I, I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. But I thought there were lots of important themes in this yeah. book. Mm -hmm. I really mm -hmm. did. I mean, I thought they, they friendship and loyalty and a work ethic and, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and, and using and appreciating intelligence. And it was diversity, but, but with merit, not, you know, it's not... I'm not crazy about those books that just say, you know, you're wonderful because you're you. Sure, mm -hmm. you are wonderful mm -hmm. because you're you, but let's develop it a little bit. And every mm -hmm. one of these kids had special talents. They had weaknesses too, and, sure. and that and was fears. part of how, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was part of how well-rounded it was. Yeah. But there was a family developed for, for these children mm -hmm. in a in a way that is not a traditional family. And I just, I mean, I thought there were this book was just full of great themes. Mm -hmm. That was part of what I loved about it, Georgia. It, it, you can bring to mind some titles. What other books in the past decade would you put this in the same category with, sort of? Um, would, well, what would one? I put that I in the category with? <laughs> <laughs> there is one out right now that uh, is new. It's Here There Be Dragons, which mm -hmm. is a new author, the same thing, and it's a fantasy type of book, but it has that same kind of spark, you know, that you're just like, you just want to read it. Mm -hmm. Which that, this reminds me of, this actually reminds me a lot of Wrinkle in Time, which is oh, uh, many classic. decades sure. oh, back. Yes, yes. But four decades ago. Yeah. I just thought it's so, which is one of my favorite books. Sure. And I feel that it's a lot like that, although it's, it's not, but it does have some of that in it. One final question. Since I started reading books at that age, you know, the, the most important thing to me was the world that the author constructed, where you could just sort of crawl in and, 
and live in. Do you, do you enjoy being in the world of this book, the world oh, of the yes, created? Oh, yeah, yes, yes, I loved yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Amy? I don't know, that's an interesting question. No, <laughs> I, I think I would find it, I think I would kind of find it frightening if I actually lived yeah. it. But, <laughs> well, that's but it was not, <laughs> it's but not like monsters in that were world jumping out. Yeah, it was, it was a mm -hmm. very, um, again, it was exciting and interesting to read about, but I don't think I'd have wanted to be in it. Georgette Sims, thank you very much for coming up here. Amy Lee Stewart, and, and we should point out, no relation to Trenton Lee Stewart, although the last two names. I, I only wish. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. Well, good. And again, two daughters. One has read the book, one has not. Two of the five daughters. Let me get it, get it straight here. One, one has read, one is in the process, that's right. All right, a little added bonus here on the end of the show. We talked to some more readers, and the two daughters are going to tell it like it is about the book. Again, The Mysterious Benedict Society. Today, thank you for joining us on the same page. We both uh, read yeah. the book. Yes, we. I, I did. I read the book. In, Mommy was a little behind at times. I have read the book. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think? I loved it. I thought it, it was. I think it's going to be the new Harry Potter. You know, they're going to uh, think. Yeah. That it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't like Harry Potter. It wasn't magical, but it had the same like can't put it down. Want to keep reading feel to it. There's four characters, four main characters in the book. They, they're all children, usually about 11 and 12, and their names are Constance, Rennie, Sticky, and Kate. Rennie is the leader and the, I would say the perfect boy. He has an inner struggle, but he's, he projects. He hides it, you know, he's, he, yes. he's, he's Hulk, he's strong, he can bust through walls. He can. I believe that I identified with the main character the most, Rennie, because he's normal and he doesn't know it, but he's probably the leader. <laughs> I kind of got hooked at the, fir like, the first few chapters and stuff because it's really mysterious. He goes to take a test. You don't know what's going to happen. It kind of makes you like, ooh, what's going to happen and stuff like that. It, it was like a book of puzzles. There was just Morse code. I was trying. I was trying to solve them as they did it, and I just I didn't get it. I, I the only one I really understood was don't say. Yeah, okay. There was just there was just one answer that I knew, and everything else is just yeah. okay. Well, I kind of get. Where do you think of this stuff? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Their mission is to stop the sender from sending out messages. I'm not going to tell you how he sends the messages, but he does, and it causes people to do stuff they wouldn't normally do. Oh, it's a thick book. It's a thick book. It's going to be something I can read. It's going to be something nice because yeah. I've been reading these little puny ones like this big and it's like, yeah. no, I need more substance than that. It's not enough. I'm hoping that they might make a second book. <laughs>